How long have you been here? About six months now. Okay, great. Looks like the floors have been refinished. Yes, sir, a couple of weeks ago. I'll take my shoes off. Thank you. How old is this house? It was built in the 1950s. Great. Someday you'll be able to afford furniture. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so all of the radiators on this side of the house are, are working great. Okay, so here's one here. This is the original radiator covers? No, sir, my husband built those. Wow, isn't he handy? Very. <laughs> and that one's on, so that one's working fine. Yeah, so we just have one that's not working, and that's right over here. Okay, another radiator cover, well done. Thank you. All right, so let's see. And this radiator, the typical 50s radiator that is officially ice cold. Let's start in the basement. Great. Okay, Richard, so what'd you find? Well, you have a forced hot water system. When I see radiators like that, I know it's either forced hot water or steam. And steam hasn't been around since the 30s, so it's forced hot water. Okay. Decades ago, all hot water radiator systems operated on gravity. The water was heated at the boiler and gently rose up through the supply line and into the radiators on each floor of the house. Once the heat released into the room, the water, now colder and heavier, fell into a return line and back to the boiler to start the process all over again. Now when electricity came around in the 20s and the 30s, then all of a sudden for convenience people put in a circulator pump to push that water around. Okay. Now this house is from the 50s, the heating system, but the boiler is a little bit newer. But there's some consistent things that are going to be on any heating boiler I want to just take you through. First, it has to have a burner to make the water hot. This is, in this case, it's oil. It could be gas. Here's the boiler. It could be any size and shape. Okay. But it's a vessel to hold the water. And then we need to have the right water pressure inside. We need enough pressure in the system to be sure there's enough water to fill all the radiators but we don't want so much that it becomes dangerous. Okay. So we have city water pressure coming in right here, and that's going to be 40, 50, maybe 60 pounds, but we only want 12 pounds going into the heating system. So this is a reducing valve, pressure reducing valve, stepping the pressure down to the right one here. Now, if I lift, let's just be sure that's working. Yeah, that seems to be working fine, and the gauge supports that. Okay. So now as we heat the water up, as we heat the water up, it needs a place to expand. So any hydronic system has an expansion tank. Inside this tank, the top half is filled with water. The bottom half is filled with air under pressure. And there's a neoprene diaphragm that separates the water and the air. As the pressure increases, it'll push down on that diaphragm, acting like a shock absorber to absorb the pressure. Okay. If this didn't work, the net result would be an increase in pressure. And this safety device is critically important. This is a pressure relief valve that'll relieve at 30 pounds pressure onto the floor. Okay? But I can tell you right now that the fill valve is right here. That seems to be working. Okay? And I think the circulator pump is circulating because all the other zones work. So think about when this house was built. It was the 50s, Second World War was just ended. You've got super highways being built all over the country, and neighborhoods are popping up everywhere off of, this, off of those highways, much like this neighborhood. Right. And the pressure was really on to keep up with this demand. How do you keep building these houses faster and cheaper? And it was no different in the heating business. Before the 50s, you would have had to run individual supplies and returns to every radiator. And what they came up with is a thing called a monoflow system. If you look carefully, you see this. You've got one pipe, monoflow, it goes right around the building, right? right? This is really the equivalent of Eisenhower Superhighway in your basement. Okay. They needed a way to use less materials, and this did it. So you have a set of T's going to each single radiator, and here's one that goes up to the radiator that's not working right. But you can really see the system right there. Here's this highway. The water's moving through this trunk, and there's two T's here. Okay. Well, why would the water ever want to go up through those T's? Why would it go through the off-ramp and go up through the radiator? Well, some engineer back in the 50s invented this simple solution. This T is a little bit different than this T. You see it? Yeah. It's got a square on it. It's called a diverter T or a monoflow T. This is cast iron. Here's a copper version of it that's cut away that lets you see what's going on inside. Look at this. You see the restriction right here? Yep. The water comes through the main trunk right here. Now that means the water has to go through a smaller opening. That makes the velocity increase, sort of like closing down a garden hose. When that happens, it creates some pull right here. It's called the Venturi effect, pulling water down here and mixing in. Well, what does that do? Well, if I have a little pull right here, it's going to pull water through the radiator. Well, that's going to make water leave from the main highway out here through the local access roads, really, go through the radiator, and then come back right here and beyond the traffic jam. You with me? Yes. And it made sure every radiator got the same temperature, the right temperature. Interesting. We know. Now, so far, 
You got the right water pressure at the boiler. Right. We know the circulator pump is working because all the other radiators work. Okay. So we've reduced it now. It has to be at some point right here at the radiator. Let's go check. All right, so here is our radiator. Right below us is that main trunk. The diverter T is on this side pulling this way, which means water is supposed to come up right there through that shutoff valve. Okay. Now, anytime I see a radiator, it's supposed to be completely filled with water. If any air was in the system, it could collect on the top of the radiator. So there's always going to be some sort of vent on a hot water radiator that will allow you to burp it. And if there was air, I'd hear that which I don't. Okay, so that tells me I have water here. To be honest with you, there's not much left. This is just a pipe. This is just a section of a cast iron radiator. And now there's a shutoff valve right here. Well, is there a chance there's a restriction here? I mean, maybe we just check this. I mean, let's see there's an open and a closed. <laughs> I don't want to tell you. I mean, the valve is closed. Oh, no. <laughs> the valve is closed. <laughs> I really... Well, now I feel silly. Let me go to the basement and turn on that service switch. Okay. <laughs> All right, I turned the boiler back on. We should be able to feel heat in a little bit. Great. But now I want you to see it, too. Look at this. Here's a smartphone, but there's an attachment that's a thermographic camera. Wow. So it should be starting to feel a little heat. So look at this. So you can see the colors. Now see from the right-hand side? Look at how it's changing. Yeah, see, wow. It's getting warmer and warmer. Cool. So actually, no, warm. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going to be warm all winter. Oh, nice. All right. I will leave you the radiator, but I'm taking this. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. Guys. Thanks so much. Oh, that's unbelievable. So why do you think somebody turned that radiator off? Well, I think the radiator was right at the base of the stairs. I assume that all the heat went up to the top floor hallway, mm -hmm. and the previous owner just came along and temporarily <laughs> closed it off. Because that is effectively zone control for this radiator. Yeah, pretty primitive zone control. So do you seriously make that house call go all the way out there, and that was the fix? Yeah, on this one, but I mean... It, it's a reminder. You've got to not overlook the simple things. I'm always called out when things don't work and you think it's got to be some elaborate mechanical problem. Right. It was just a simple pilot error. Hey, if that's plumbing, I got the next one. <laughs> you're, you're a pro. <laughs>